Hi, so my name is Toby Gessenberg, and I'm going to share some work with you that I've been doing in collaboration with Max Siegel and Josh Tenenbaum. And then this work, we're really interested in people's remarkable ability to figure out what happened. So some of you may know um, the TV series Sherlock, and that's probably the extreme ideal of figuring out what happened. And while we're, while we're all not Sherlocks, we're pretty close in some senses. So there's a lot of, that you can learn about what happened from just looking at an object or a visual scene. And sometimes even more when you combine both seeing and hearing. So here in the case of JFK, there were some reports for a while that people have heard different shots from different directions. And if that's the case, then you're going to construct a different story for what happened um, compared to if there had only been one shot. So we wanted to study this um, people's ability to integrate both visual and auditory information in order to figure out what happened. And in order to do so, we um, designed this model of a Plinko machine. And I'm just going to show you that machine in action. So that's going to be a ball dropping, and it's going to make some sounds as it collides with the different objects. Flip. I'm going to show you another. Another scene. OK, so given now that you know how this Blinker machine works, I can ask you to do a couple of things with it. For example, I can ask you to, to say where you think the ball will land. And I'm going to use this creepy hand down here. And it's going to be moving from the left to the right very slowly. And where you think that the ball is going to end up, please clap. So we're going to get a nice distribution, hopefully. Yeah, nice. That sounded like a bimodal to me. And that's sort of what the data looks like if you ask participants to do that. Um, so I think a nice replication right here. Um, in order to get a sense for how people are doing these predictions, we had to assume that there are, or we made an assumption that there are two different sources of uncertainty that people may have in their predictions, one of which is like exactly how the ball dropped. And then another one is like how exactly the ball is going to basically bounce off the object that it collides with. So now that you know how to do predictions, I can also ask you to do the, op the opposite, like to infer from seeing the final location of the ball where it was dropped. So I'm going to use my hand again, and please clap again where you think the hole was that the ball was dropped in. OK. So here's how we do inference. Right? We just run a forward model um, for the different possible locations. So we imagine if the ball was dropped in there, on the left side, where would it end up? If it was dropped in the middle, where would it end up? If it was dropped on the right, where would it end up? And then we, and then, then we can do basically inference and figure out the most likely hole that the ball was dropped in, given, um, given its final position. So now I told you about integrating both visual and auditory information. So one thing I can do is I can just cover up the box and now play you the sound that the ball made when it was dropped. So that's the sound. And if I now show you that scene and we play the same game again, where do you think it was dropped? OK. So some of you paid close attention. Some of you were just sort of paying half attention, because I actually gave the solution like a little bit earlier. It was dropped in the middle. But what, what I care most about is like the, the way in which the distribution, of course, changes. So this was when you only saw where the, the final location. But when you also heard where the ball was dropped, you got a different distribution in, in what you think had happened. If you're curious why the, the, the three sounds, the ball drops in the middle, lands on this first thing here, then goes here, goes against the wall and then comes down. So that's where the three sounds are coming from. Just to sum up, so what we, want, what, we, what we show in this project, I think, is that people are quite good at building mental models of the world, that simulating these mental models generates both sort of visual information but also auditory information, and that by conditioning on these different sources of information, we can figure out what happened. Thank you very much. <laughs>